Vern Gross, a Spokane native, arrived at Whitworth in fall 1946. He wasn't doctor when he arrived. Despite the short distance from his childhood home to the campus, Whitworth was a whole new world for Vern, exposing him to people and ideas that would set the course for his life and vocation. Professor of Physics, William G. Wilson, and Professor of Math, John A. Carlson, were particular influences in Vern's life. Wilson in guiding and encouraging his technical writing, and Carlson in his deep spiritual commitment combined with incredible mathematical prowess. By the time Vern graduated with a degree in physics in 1950, he had encountered substantial changes to his faith. He learned to appreciate what he calls the subtle undergirding of providence, that God is sovereign, good, interested in us, and in control. One of Vern's favorite Whitworth memories was helping to assemble a 20 by 48 foot Quonset style hut behind Washington Hall. The enrollment of World War II veterans had created a greater demand on classroom space and the building was used for an engineering course. Vern remembers the challenge of working in a poorly heated, minimally lit room with tables that jiggled on the unstable floor. Reflecting on the experience, he says, the spirit of everyone was what made the impossible possible, enduring tough times together. Vern also met the woman who became his wife, Phyllis, at Whitworth. The two were married in April 1951. Within three weeks of Vern's graduation, North Korea invaded South Korea, and Vern was soon serving in the United States Air Force. Upon his discharge, he began work in the field of engineering eventually transitioning into applied physics through the design of guided missiles. Out of concern about the performance of air defense weaponry, Verne began publishing papers focused on weapon system reliability. These papers brought him into executive aerospace positions through which he worked on NASA's manned space programs, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. After the explosion of Apollo 204, he was appointed to a five-man NASA space flight team. Fern then completed a systems management graduate degree at the University of Southern California and taught graduate courses in Germany, Spain, and Mexico, as well as in Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. He would later go on to be granted an honorary Doctor of Science degree from Vanguard University of Southern California. In 1969, Vern responded to a Los Angeles Times editorial that criticized the California Board of Education about its teaching of evolution. This response led to his testimony on the board's revision of its science curriculum. Vern's revision was unanimously accepted, which set off a three-year international battle over how the origins of the universe, life, and man should be taught. The conflict ended with more than 200 changes to science textbooks and with Vern's appointment as a California Curriculum Commissioner, responsible for selecting textbooks for more than 4 million school children. In 1971, Vern met California Governor Ronald Reagan, who appointed him to several systems methodology positions. When Reagan became president, he selected Vern as one of the five members of the National Transportation Safety Board. Through the White House, Vern would also work on assignments with both the Environmental Protection Agency and NASA. When Vern left public office, he established the Omega Systems Group, an international systems management consulting firm, and patented a revolutionary methodology for managing every conceivable risk in all types of companies and organizations. This technique was successfully utilized to combat terrorism at the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics. In 1988, as a well-recognized aviation and risk expert, Vern began participating in over 400 interviews on major network news programs, such as The Today Show, Good Morning America, CBS Newswatch, The O'Reilly Factor, and BBC London. During the Clinton administration in 1997, former Vice President Al Gore solicited Vern's expertise for the White House Commission on Aviation Safety and Security. Vern has written several books and has been published internationally in more than 60 journals and periodicals. He remains active as the chairman of Omega Systems Group and teaches an adult Bible study class at his church. Despite his professional success, 
Fern does not consider his career to be his greatest accomplishment. Rather, he is proud that he and Phyllis raised their six children to become committed Christian adults. Nanette followed in her father's footsteps, graduating from Whitworth in 1986, and she, along with siblings Rhonda, Bradley, Wesley, Linda, and Brenda, have blessed Vern and Phyllis with 28 grandchildren. Reflecting on the legacy he hopes to leave, Vern says, I want to hear from my Lord and Savior. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. I hope that invitation will be based in part on my having made a good investment of time and effort in the lives of others by living out the gospel of Christ. Vern has indeed blessed many people over the years, and Whitworth is proud to call him a Whitworthian for life.